Hello! Today I am continuing with uh, Christopher Nolan uh, filmography, and this time it is Interstellar, starring Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, Jessica Chastain, Michael Caine, Kate also has Casey Affleck and uh, Topher Grace, um, Bella Irwin. Ellen Burstein. I know some, um, I will say, I know some people aren't, uh, uh, don't love this film as much as some of his other movies. It seems to be like uh, a film that some people just they're really enjoy or are just kind of like, eh, it's okay. Like they're not entirely thrilled with the film. Um, Basically, I think it's a very good film. I enjoyed this movie. I've, I enjoyed all of his films. Nolan's films. I basically have said that before. I basically will continue to say it. Um, one thing that's cool with the Blu-rays is you got these uh, cool uh, IMAX film cells. That, uh, I don't know if you can really see it, but it's um, McConaughey and uh, one of the crew members, Man Hathaway. Who is that? I kind of want to say something about uh, who that other person is, but you can't really see it very well. Maybe you can. I don't know. I have another one. These often, no, the Blu rays actually came with one, but yeah, this is pretty much the same thing. Just different because now McConaughey's head's down. Um, the reason I have two is because uh, my mom also bought a Blu ray of this and she said I could have. Uh, I could have one she had, and uh, I thought, oh, okay. So that's just sort of a bonus that came with this. I'm not sure they come with the, with, if you buy the Blu-rays, if they come with this uh, IMAX cells anymore. I never really... looked a whole lot though I would think I would uh, you'd think they would have uh, uh, something on the front like this right there but you know it doesn't um, but others don't but yeah, I enjoy this film. Um, basically, the whole rundown is um, Matthew McConaughey's character Cooper. You know, he is a pilot, and um, because of how things went, we're just going uh, the country, not just the country, but the planet as a whole, some future. Um, basically, he had to become a farmer because, you know, food and stuff was more important than, like, what he did. Uh, uh, he was, like, a, I believe he was a test pilot. And then also just flew planes, flew jets. Um, but, uh... As the basically, you can kind of tell he's sort of a little bored with the mundane nature of the what's happening. You know, he's a bit basically McConaughey wants to be out uh, 
a star to know beyond. Just do something. And uh, one day he he gets that chance and um, has to go to outer space with um, Anne Hathaway and the crew members. This was a, a team created by Michael Caine, who's uh, Anne Hathaway's father in this movie. And um, he, uh, and, um, <clears throat> he has them go to various places to try and find a place that's suitable for the human race because basically the earth is dying that's why food is important uh, I kind of didn't say that uh, when I probably should have at the beginning but um, you probably have seen this film anyway but just in, on the off chance one hasn't seen it I'm gonna basically try not to spoil the film uh, on the off chance one hasn't seen this I might do a bad job of it too. I probably have done not the best job of explaining some of these movies to those who have not seen it. Because I'm trying to talk in a way that both those who have seen it know what I'm talking about, those who haven't seen it, hopefully they'll be interested. Uh, though I might be failing. Anyway, they basically go out and look beyond galaxy to try and find uh, a suitable planet for human life and others have gone out before them and no response they're so far out they can't really they either can't communicate back with us or they've died um, and though if you're in space, you're near a signal that uh, some astronauts have gone to a planet and have sent a signal. That way, if anyone's out there, here, here I am, you can come get me or meet me here. Perhaps there's life is sustainable here. Um, but, and they even have things to help like organically reproduce uh, people for a population um, and if on the off chance that when they go to try and come back to earth there is no earth um, and basically uh, you know and Jessica Chastain this character she plays Matthew McConaughey's daughter. Casey Affleck is his son. And they're kids when they're when he leaves, but then they grow older. And uh, you know, Casey Affleck's he he takes care of the house that they all lived in. John Lithgow's in this film. He plays his grandfather. And uh Yeah, it's a pretty good film. But I probably have already said that a few times already. Um, and basically, him leaving when he does sort of causes some sort of friction of sorts. Particularly with his daughter. Um, Casey Affleck's character isn't so... isn't very angry at him, you know. They have video chats that they can send to him. Because uh, the thing is, like every hour, every minute, or whatever, is like so many months, or so many years. So it's like in an hour, it'd be like, that's seven years Earth time in one hour where they are. So, yeah. Time is of the essence, so they can only be gone really for so long before coming back because all those if people are still alive all those who were you know very young when they left would not then be either 
old or dead. And, um, yeah. There's some typical kind of Nolan tropes. You know, you do have to pay attention when watching this film. Though I think at this point, that, that's probably very well established that one must pay attention when watching a Nolan film. Again, I apologize if I kind of um, am not really doing a, the plots of these of this film or any other films that I've talked about justice. But I don't know. It's one of those things. I'm very I'm like excited. In a way, it's like I have a lot to say. And yet, I don't truly know how to properly formulate it. Either. I have even at times have tried to write some of this stuff up like a little blurb, but I don't know. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. It's just kind of best I just go off the cuff, really. But I love Interstellar. I think it was one of the best films of 2014. For me, it was the best movie. It was my favorite movie. I think it could have been nominated for Best Picture, Director, um, whether it won either of those awards. Uh, it won Best Visual Effects, which is deserving, in my opinion. Um, it was nominated for Original Score. Uh, it lost to the Grand Budapest Hotel, which, that's a good score, but uh, just something about Interstellar, I just just very epic. Um, but yeah, Interstellar, you know, I think for some people it was a bit different. Um, though Nolan's films are always different, even his Batman is different. But, I don't know, for whatever reason, this film kind of was like, hmm, it's like, I like it, yet, I don't know, just it was like okay for so many people uh, and there are those who just you know they didn't like it um, some it was too long it's almost three hours it's like two hours 49 minutes the length can be uh, I could see uh, being a problem for some people it's not a problem for me um, I enjoy epic films uh, one of my favorite films of all time is Lawrence of Arabia I think that's great um, but yeah, the, the Interstellar is one of those films that it's like, I don't know, perhaps for some you just need to be in the right mood, right mindset. Other people, it's like, it's just, you know, it's a good, on a good science fiction movie. And there's like a whole huge thing about the scientific accuracy uh, about the film. Which is interesting because they got a actual like uh, like a scientist or a, like an expert in this field with the kind of science this movie has as an executive producer and helped Nolan uh, uh, understand what some of the stuff they're talking about, you know, that way into his movie when writing it. He knows, he understand. He knows and understands what's being taught or being told to him, like with black holes and um, wormholes. Um, it's quite interesting. And wormholes are like used to like uh, transport them to a whole another uh, part of the universe and it's it's quite interesting and the fact that they, they had no CG and used actual visual effects and in-camera effects and made things look so just so real even though it was no it wasn't it was made up but technology is so incredible um, it is truly really deserving of the best uh, visual effects uh, Oscar. Um, I think all the performances in this film are really good. They're outstanding. Um, uh, I can't really think of one performance that 
was really bad, exactly. Um, I will say I'm not a huge Matthew McConaughey fan. Uh, I don't know, just some of the movie roles and choices he has made over the years. I don't know. Just not a huge fan of his overall work. Um, but this is, uh, I think, uh, his best uh, film, best performance, in my opinion. He was very good. Um, I did see Dallas Buyers Club, which came out a year before. He was very good in that. I saw Mud also. He was excellent in that. Mud is actually what convinced Nolan to cast him in this film. And um, he plays his part well. He's great. Um, yeah, Amy Hathaway is really good. Michael Caine, Jessica Chastain, Casey Affleck, John Lithgow. Um, so there's so many names. A lot of people. Um, Matt Damon's in this film. Uh, he comes in later. So if you don't see him right away, just don't. Like, worry if you haven't seen this movie and you hear Matt Damon's in this, wow, where? And then you don't see him till like, halfway through the film. Uh, but, but, yeah, it's a very interesting film. It's, like, a lot of, you know, a lot of science, a lot of, uh, say, philosophical stuff, and perhaps even a, bit, a little bit of religious stuff. Not over heavy-handed in terms of religious, but there's, like, stuff on talk about and a scene like love and love is what can transcend through the universe and is unconditional and can never really waver like uh, Cooper Matthew McConaughey's character is love for his kids you know doesn't matter where he is in the universe it can be in a t totally different galaxy but he loves his kids he'll do whatever he can to get back to his kids to see them and um The whole talk about love, you know, you're like, oh, God is love and all that. And I'm not trying to be preachy or anything, so I hope you don't <laughs> yeah, take it that way. But it's just, it's quite interesting uh, to hear things like that. And then I guess when you kind of stop and think, it's like, hmm. Though, again, you, it could be just one's interpretation. I could be in seeing it that way, you know. Aside from the scientific and philosophical stuff, there could be a little religious stuff in there. Um, again, that could just be me, but when that kind of com that conversation was being had, it just kind of, I don't know, stuck out to me. Again, I could be completely wrong, could just be my interpretation. No one may never have even considered or thought of a religious uh, moment or having something that sort of could be conceived or seen religiously in the midst of this scientific and philosophical uh, type film. Um, and again, for those who are upset over the scientific possible inaccuracies, I'm like, it's science fiction. It's not going to be 100% pure science. I mean, yes, they are using real-world science, and a producer on the film is an actual scientist in that in the field, and he is explaining to the director and all those involved what certain things mean so they understand this. That way they can... Accurately portray what they're trying to uh, show on the, on film, and um, yeah, you know I think that's even though I might have done a terrible job uh, talking about the plot, I think I did a fairly good job of trying to explain why I like it. Basically, there's so much in this movie. I feel like. You know, Basically, anybody could like this movie. Not saying they will, but I think many people 
could have an opportunity of enjoying this movie. Um, perhaps there's somebody in the cast you just don't aren't that fond of. Like for me, I'm not a huge M Matthew McConaughey fan, but it's a S Christopher Nolan film, and I'm like, you know, why not? You know, I just yeah, the move, the trailers looked interesting to me. The fact that Christopher Nolan was making it, and all the other cast members that were going to be in it, or are in it, you know, I'm like, I'm going to see this anyway. And I did, and I saw it on the big screen, and I loved it. Really good. I've heard IMAX is a great film to see all of Nolan's films on, that you can see on there, but fortunately the IMAX I have, or that is in my town isn't very good. Uh, I might have mentioned this before, but uh, I'll say it again. Basically, it's uh, if you were going to have a home movie theater, uh, but you wanted it to look like a, an IMAX or be that in the style of an IMAX theater, the dome and whatnot, then, you know, I would say... In that case, the IMAX here in Des Moines is great for a home movie theater. As an actual IMAX, it's not very good. I've been to a real one in uh, Florida when I was like three. Saw this cool nature documentary with a lot of animals and land and ocean. Really cool. I just remember seeing the screen so big, it left a big impact on me. I loved it. And, um, yeah. It's, uh, uh, it's all crowded and stuff. I don't know. Well, that's enough of that IMAX. IMAX talk, but if you have that opportunity to see a Christopher Nolan film, on an IMAX uh, screen that is near you, and you're able to go, I'd say do it. Uh, however, if you're like me, and the IMAX you got in town sucks, I say, I'll say that again. Uh, actual proper IMAX, I'll say that. A proper IMAX. Because otherwise, I have to go to Chicago and I'm not, I don't think I want to drive seven, eight hours just to watch a movie. And then come back home. This is not a good time, really, to be had. You know, spending more money than what one would intend for seeing a movie. Um, but yeah, kind of rambled on at the very end. That's what I kind of do anyway. But yeah, seeing a Nolan film, if you're able to see it in a, on a proper IMAX screen, go for it. Otherwise. In my opinion, just keep seeing uh, the films. Keep seeing them on the big screen, because Christopher Nolan is one of those filmmakers who does a lot of original content, a lot of stuff that people just might not think of. He's somebody who definitely uh, thinks out of the box, and um, with that, I think he should be very respected and deserves all the praise he gets. Uh, so that's my thoughts on Interstellar. Kind of trailed on, but I really like it. I enjoy it. Give it some examples. Kind of told you about the basic plot. Perhaps failed in doing so, but yeah. Hope you'll find this of interest. Um, if you've seen the movie, do you like it? Do you not? Uh, if you haven't, have you been interested in before? Are you interested now? I've talked about it. I'm not sure you would be, but I don't know. Kind of rambled. So, perhaps I might discourage, or discourage some people from seeing this. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's all I got for you today. Uh, have a good weekend. 
Hope you all also have a good day today. And I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.